Okay, so, sorry about that guys, I was just interrupted. Uh, so, to continue on, we're going to connect this as well. We're going to add an action actuator and a motion actuator. So, connect that. Connect the forward to the action. Oops and to the motion at the same time. So I'm just going to call this forward action and I'm going to call this forward motion. So the action gesture run. So this starts at 6 By the way, you use uh, arrow keys to control this. 21. Ends at 21, so I'm going to set this to 21. Loop stop. And don't forget to set the animation to Jester Run. Priority. I'm going to give this a priority of 5. Blend in. We're going to make this 7. So now that we got that set up, so the motion, this is the actual movement of the object in the 3D world. So that's just the action, that's the animation. This is the actual movement. So as you can see here, uh, the way Blender is set up, I'm not sure why this is like that. The front view, if you look on the front view, the Y axis arrow here points towards the back. So when you're doing movement, if you want the character to move forward, you have to make this n the the movement on the y axis negative. So we're going to set this to negative 0 0.5 0 0.05. Uh, I just wanted to point that out because a lot of people mess up because of that. So All right, so just run a simple test forward works just fine and as you can see he does the animation it's very smooth so now we're gonna make the character turn so what I'm gonna do let me just change lower the graphics a bit uh, go to properties because I'm running this on GLSL which is not supposed to be the way it should be because it's it just takes up memory so I'm just gonna change this back to drop sheet so now we want the player to turn using the W and A or right and left depending on which controls you prefer. So add keyboard make this turn right key W and turn right so uh, same thing with the forward we want this to be done when the players in collision with the actually no we just want it to be when the players at state one because you might want him to turn while he's in the air if you don't want him to turn while he's jumping you should connect this if you want him to be able to turn while he's jumping you shouldn't connect it and just in case you connected it you can just connect it if you want to disconnect it you could just reconnect it and it's gonna disconnect it for you so um, we're gonna add a motion uh, turning doesn't need an animation you just need the motion so we're gonna connect that call this turn right and this indicates location I want to change rotation so this is rotation on the z-axis okay Actually, no, it's, this is the z-axis, x, y, z. So I'm going to set this to negative 0 0.04. And you can experiment with different, different degrees. Um, add another one for the left. Turn left. Change this to A. And turn left 
so we are going to connect that the state indicator and the turn left. Hmm, I'm not sure why that disconnected. Okay, so add a motion actuator. Connect that rotation 0 0.05. So right is a negative, left is a positive. Don't ask me how that works out. I'm not really sure myself. I think it should be the opposite personally. So, test this out. So do a simple test forward and as you can see the character doesn't turn. Um, let's just see here. All the linking is done properly so... Oh yeah, I think it's just because I'm used to the old blender so they made the turn actually slower so we need to make to give it a higher value. So let's just make this a negative 3 for the right, for the left make it a 3, positive 3. It's just that I was used to the old Blender version, which had a faster turning, which had faster turning. So if you test this out, you can see that the character actually turns. Now you notice that the character is running a bit too slow, so you could obviously change that. You can see motion forward, movement, change this to negative. Let's just try negative 1, see how that goes. Oh, way too fast. Negative 0 0.15 maybe. So this is for you to do the perfecting. This is also way too fast, but you can perfect it yourself. So I'll just set this to negative 0 0.10 and go with that. Okay, so now we have a player who would move forward, turn, and fall if he's not in collision with the ground. Alright. So now I'm going to go over the jump. All right, so what you want to do is add a keyboard. How this is going to work is the player presses space. The property jump changes to 1 which indicates that the player should be in air should be in his jumping state basically it's not going to change the player state it's just going to cha change the jump property um, and when he lands on the platform it, the jump property is going to change to zero this is why you need platform on every the property platform on every platform you have or whatever you want to call that property um, because if th this is going to be set so that if the player collides with an object that has the property platform the jump is going to be set to zero, so he wouldn't be jumping. If you didn't add the property platform to your platforms or any object that the player would be able to stand on, the player is just going to keep jumping. And you could test that out later by adding a cube or a plane or something like that. So we're just going to move on. Um, add space, let's call this jump indicator. Key, space. And connect that you might want to make sure that the player can only jump while he's on the ground and while he's in player in, in state 1 so you connect the state 1 um, sensor in terms of collision it's just up to you whether you want him to be able to jump while he's in the air I don't really want him to jump while he's in the air so I'm just gonna connect that uh, change this to jump indicator and we're gonna add a property so this actuator is used to control properties so you wanna make sure that first of all let's call this jump indicator you wanna make sure that this is on a sign which means that it's gonna sign the exact number you could do add copy toggle but we want this to be on a sign so that it would assign the exact number that we specify. So select the property. We want it to change the jump property. Set the value to 1. So now when the player presses space and he's in collision with the ground and the player state is 1, it's going to assign the property 1 to jump. It's going to change this to 
one. So if you want to see this change, you can click on this, which means it, and over here in the options, show debug properties. Okay, so now you need to have this selected if you want to see the change in the game. Uh, when you publish the game, uh, you're not going to see, like if, if I press play, you can see, um, you can see on the top left corner of my screen, it has a lot of properties. One of them is the gesture jump at the top and it's set to zero. So uh, the rest are just properties that I gave to the mesh. You don't need to worry about those. So those properties are not going to show up when you publish the game. So you can just keep that on before you publish. It doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just for debugging. So assigns it one and now we're going to make it so that if the property jump is one the player would jump and do the jump animation. So property sensor call this jump. So this is, this is performing the actual jump. Equal jump. So it's saying that if the property jump equals the value one and connect call this jump we'll add an action and a motion so connect that call this jump action and we'll call this jump motion alright so the action loop stop gesture jump it has two jumps so you can s select whichever you like uh, I think they're about the same length no one is longer so we're just gonna go with jump one uh, we're just gonna set it so that you can see it ends at eight we're gonna make it set we want the player to just transition to the jump right away so we're gonna set that to start at seven end at eight you need at least two frames to perform the animation that's why I'm using seven and eight if you have it start at eight and end at eight it probably wouldn't work uh, blend in is what's gonna make the transition smooth like if you try actually I wouldn't test it right now but if you test it if you test this out without actually making it transition smoothly it would just change to that uh, uh, the player would actually change to that pose right away which would make your game look weird. So you want to make it transition smoothly. So I'm just going to set this to 7. Maybe that's maybe 10 is too slow. Priority, we're going to set this to 3. It has to have more priority than the forward animation so that when the player is jumping and pressing forward, it's not going to do the forward animation. Um, next is motion. We want the player to move upwards. So X, Y, Z. We want him to move. Let's say, let's set this to 15. So positive 15, which means the player is going to go up. And now, uh, the last thing we're going to do is the actual landing. So the player, like if you notice right now, if I test this, he lands, he can move, press space. Notice the property is going to change to 1. Um, 15 may be too much. So 0.15. You have to do a lot of experimenting sometimes to get this right. So, property change. You can notice that's a jump. It, he keeps jumping. That's because we didn't set the landing uh, logic. Uh, let's just make this 0 0.25. Okay, so the landing, um, we're going to set it so that if the player, we could actually reuse this, I think. Um, yes collision with platform and you could add a collision and just replicate this or you could just link it reuse it so if the player collides with platform we're gonna set this to land property connect assign we're gonna call this land assign jump to be zero so this would return the player to the initial state where he's not jumping and that's if he collides with 
the property platform. Otherwise, you're going to see what you saw previously. The player's just going to keep jumping. So let's test this out. Run, turns, jumps, lands, stops. So here you have basic controls set for your character. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you have comments or crits, uh, you're welcome to post them. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. Thank you.